Hello everybody and welcome to the New Moon Sagittarius and I am recording this New Moon Sagittarius just as Venus in Scorpio and I am a Venus in Scorpio. Venus in Scorpio is trining Jupiter in Pisces just tomorrow and I cannot wait. I just did a separate recording about this Venus trine Jupiter because it is one of the most auspicious lucky days of the year and it is giving me so much hope going into this new moon Sagittarius and Sagittarius of course rules over hope and we've got Jupiter exalted in Pisces giving this beautiful trine to Venus telling us that we can manifest everything that we desire and I also did a video about how to manifest with the energy of Venus you'll have to check it out I'm gonna put links to all these videos down below because this is a potent time for just creating what you want and I do have so much hope for the future and my girlfriend and I used to have this joke um, we called it smoking hopium and it was like when things aren't going well but you have so much hope for the future it's like you are smoking hopium you're you're just in this you're almost high on hope that things will get better and that is where I think we are right now but then as we continue on in this new moon Sagittarius report I have to say there is this really interesting four horsemen of the apocalypse looming so we just have this interesting I just saw a blue stellar jay flying by and the blue stellar jay is the bluebird of happiness so we just have this interesting juxtaposition in our world right now where there is a lot of hope that things are going to get better but then there's also this pullback of like something some dark energy that says maybe it's not going to get better maybe it's we're going into the storm which is going to come later with the saving symbol so you're going to want to stay tuned for the whole recording because we're going to it's like the hero's journey which also reminds me of the Sagittarius Sagittarius is always traveling and going on the grand adventure and we have this hero's journey out before us and this we leave on the journey with all this hope for all that can be attained on this journey but then we might meet up with some conflict or we might meet the four horsemen on the road and that's scary and it all kind of reminds me of an epic tale like the Lord of the Rings or something so we'll just see what is going to happen but for now let's focus on the fact that the Venus, then Mercury, then the Sun, then the Moon, all these planets that are in Scorpio will come through Scorpio at 28 degrees and they will all one by one trine Jupiter in Pisces at 28 degrees. This is really good luck for the water signs. So if you are a Cancer, Scorpio, or Pisces, Hurrah! We have some really lucky star energy that is saying we can manifest what we desire and really make a wish for this new moon in Sagittarius. And if you have a wish or you have something that you want to manifest, leave it down below and I will put it in my singing bowl. I'll ring it into being with some distance Reiki. And I love just supporting people with what they want to manifest. There's so many people who have these incredible wishes and things that they really want to manifest for themselves and for their family and for the world at large. And I love hearing about them. So feel free to drop a comment of what you want to manifest and as we have all these opportunities pouring in for all the water signs but also anywhere in your astrology chart where you have 28 degrees any planet maybe you were born with the sun at 28 degrees or the moon at 28 degrees look at your chart see if maybe your north node is at 28 degrees or your ascendant somewhere in your chart i bet you have something at 28 degrees and that is where opportunity will strike this month for you so check it out and 
get ready to be ready is really the energy of this new moon Sagittarius. New moon Sagittarius is an excellent time for setting the intention for success. Sagittarius are some of the most successful people I know. Sagittarius is ruled by Jupiter and Jupiter is the king who just really accomplishes so much and he can also grant wishes. So really dig deep into your heart this month and see what your intention is. What do you want to manifest next? And this is more of a time for just thinking about your intention, getting out your journal and writing out your intention. It's more of a dreaming the dream into being, but not necessarily going out and doing the thing yet because the energy doesn't really support doing the thing. This is more of a time for just looking forward and just mapping out your trajectory and seeing where it is you wanna go next with your business, with your life, and just set those intentions and then remember, we also have Mars in Gemini, which is going retrograde right now. And our ambitions are going backwards. And then if you know any Geminis, you know that they can have just a lot of different directions they want to go in. So not only is Mars, our ambition, going retrograde, but it's also as if our ambitions are split right now, like the energy is split. We're not sure what we wanna do and we have all these choices and all these distractions and I am really feeling this personally right now because I think I just might have one too many side hustles happening in my life and I am so curious to know how many of you may also be working several jobs and I don't know if this is just the way that our world is going to where we just can't afford to live on one job alone or are we just a particular generation that likes to work several I mean I actually really enjoy working a lot of different jobs because it keeps me from ever getting bored I'm somebody who could get bored at work if I did just one thing all the time but right now I am a massage therapist I am a realtor I own the bent health guide magazine I work with my husband doing these videos for YouTube. It's just a lot. And then my son has even started his own Etsy shop and he's been blowing up as an influencer. And then, you know, I'm also a mom and that's probably the most important job of all. And my husband is a teacher and a photographer and videographer and he does all the design for the Bend Health Guide. So we're just all working so many different jobs. And I think with like inflation, it's almost like one job is not enough. You have to have these multiple income streams right now. And we do have multiple income streams, but oh my gosh, it is so exhausting. And I'm hearing this from so many of my clients as well, that they also are just exhausted by doing multiple side hustles, multiple jobs, and being self-employed. And so I am wondering if any of you are being affected by that too, because I think that's some of the energy that we are feeling with this Mars and Gemini retrograde. It's like we're all pretty scattered. We have more information coming at us right now with social media and TV and videos than we've ever had before. And it's all just so nonstop, all the information and all the side hustles. And yet it's still never really enough, even that we're doing so much more than maybe our ancestors did for work. And so I just am curious if any of you guys are feeling that with, I feel like that is the vibe of the Mars and Gemini. And I actually got up really early this morning at like 5 a.m. I was taking a big, uh, renewing my real estate license and I had to take a big exam at 5 a.m. and I got up and I went outside and I saw the constellation of Castor and Pollux which of course 
is in the Gemini constellation. They are the twins. And Castor and Pollux are the two brothers that make up the Gemini twins. And if you ever go outside in the early morning right now, in winter in the Northern Hemisphere, you can see Castor and Pollux in the morning sky right next to Sirius the dog star. I almost like to think that Sirius the dog star is their dog. But um, the twins were supposedly born from one egg after Zeus disguised himself. It's always Zeus. <laughs> after Zeus disguised himself as a swan and seduced their mother Leda. And the one twin, Pollux, is Zeus's son, and he is immortal. But his brother, Castor, was mortal since he had been from another father, but both sons were orphaned by their mother because they were of separate fathers, and it was sort of a disgrace for the time. So they were orphaned, and they were raised by Chiron the wounded warrior healer who taught them how to be great horsemen and also how to navigate the sea by stars. And they ended up saving Jason the Argonaut of at sea during a wicked storm. So that is their big claim to fame. Castor and Pollux saved Jason the Argonaut during a massive storm. And this month has a lot of stormy energy about it because I just did my nine star key astrology reading that indicates we may have some massive storms coming in November. So be sure to check out the Nine Star Key Earth Star to learn about that. It's a whole other system of astrology. It's nature-based, but we are going into this heavy Earth energy combined, two Earth Star combined with the five Moist Soil Star, and there could be some really wicked storms coming in. And then all of these planets, starting with Mercury, Venus, Sun, and Moon, will all trine Chiron, that wounded warrior healer. And this brings an opportunity. Remember, trines are always opportunity. This brings an opportunity to finally heal your wounds, healer, heal thyself. So this is an excellent month to take some time out for self-care, to heal yourself, get in with the doctor, go to the dentist, do all the things this month. And once again, East meets West, because the Nine Star Key is saying the same thing this month as we are in that two Earth star, that is the caregiver star. It is time to take care of yourself. And I find it fascinating because Sagittarius is an archer and so is Chiron. And what are we shooting our arrows at now? And what is our goal. We can finally pull back the bow and arrow and let that arrow fly. And what is your intention? Make sure you know where you're shooting your arrows toward. And what about your health and wellness goals? Will you also shoot some arrows toward your health and wellness this month? And what about all these horses? I started counting the horses when I had, um, we've got Castor and Pollux and Chiron and Sagittarius and that is four horsemen. I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, but I just had to do a deep dive into the symbolism of horses. And in both Celtic and Greek mythology, horses are a symbol of war and doing battle and having a victory. And horses are a symbol of freedom, power, and that life force energy. And once represented great wealth. It was such a great wealth and attainment just to have a horse. And all of these are Sagittarius strengths too. This is all the things that Sagittarius represents. Travel, freedom, power, wealth, and that physical life force energy. 
And in Native American cultures, riding a horse was said to connect you to the earth and the same time listening to the spirits whisper in the wind. And this means stay rooted this month, but also be listening for the higher wisdom. And I love that. And if you've ever ridden a horse or you've been around horses, you know it is a mystical moment with this beautiful horse who will carry you. And for me, riding a horse represents the deepest trust. I once rode a horse over Yosemite right on the cliffs. And I just barely knew this horse and I thought, my God, my life is in your hands. It was such a moment of deep trust. So all of these horses showing up this month are asking us to have faith, have hope, have trust in the process. And I'm also thinking about those four horsemen. As I said, boy, we've got Castor, Pollux, Chiron, and Sagittarius. I just see them together as the four horsemen of the apocalypse, representing conquest, war, famine, and death. And then I have to say, cancel, cancel. <laughs> Let's hope it's not that, right? But. It is interesting that we do see four horsemen in this astrology report. So take that as you will, do what you will with that idea. But let's look at the Sabian symbols for this new moon, shall we? And we are at Sagittarius, one degree, sun and moon, which the symbol is retired army veterans gather to reawaken old memories. And we just had Veterans Day, so how perfect is that? And the keynote is this will be, this will reaffirm the value of the struggle upon which civilization and group achievements are founded. And the military men who come together are linked by their actions and a consciousness with roots in a common goal and past. And what we call civilization is built by constant struggles against nature for it seeks to wrench power out from nature. And this element of power is seen in its most obvious aspect in the military or in war. Oh my goodness, we got so many mentions of war this month. And the veterans groups in all countries seek to rekindle the old fires of well-fought battles. But an abstract or religious thinking relating to Sagittarius implies a special kind of fire. It is a fire that burns the now of natural living in order to build a greater tomorrow. And this is a future-oriented fire that aspires to produce a greater, wild, wider civilization, even though it finds its roots in the harvest of all of mankind's past. Comrade camaraderie and group activities with friends are implied here, but the togetherness is one of fighting spirits. So there is a perpetuation of the spirit of struggle for power here. Oh, interesting. <laughs> so what are we moving into? Let's just look ahead a second at Sagittarius, two degrees, which is white carped waves display the power of the wind over the sea. And the mobilization of unconscious energies under the presence of super personal motives. Wind and sea are always in constant interplay, and the results of this are inspiring and beautiful. 
In symbolism, the wind is the early Greek word for spirit. And the sea is the stirring of deep energies, producing a duality that obeys cosmic or super personal rhythms, the power of which is irresistible. This is a vision of a powerful but beautiful storm of nature with the often crisis of a civilization which progresses through war. And the picture presented speaks of a rhythmic intensity that is caused by a massive storm. Oh my gosh, both the nine star key and the earth star reading that I just did, you'll have to go check that reading out because that reading was talking all about the potential for massive storms this November. And the east meets west because here we look at the western astrology and the Sagittarius Sabian symbol is also indicating big storms. And so keep your faith is all I can say. And, you know, smoke your hopium. <laughs> we got to hope for a better future, even amidst the storms. And even as we hear the clamor of the four horsemen coming and the potential for apocalypse, it's such an interesting time to be alive. But I feel so lucky to be alive right now because this is such a fascinating time. And so make sure that you like, subscribe, and comment for a chance to win a free astrology chart when I do the Gemini full moon. And that will be my next astrology report. Stay tuned, friends, and I'll see you next time.